Hello, today we will be going through the Retail Pricing and Analytics Dashboard. Uh, this is really a great dashboard, uh, something I think a new theme uh, that we've been feeling for, for quite a you know, while actually, not, not quite so new, uh, of a way to track uh, sales performance and performance of the business. Typically, companies are only concerned with you know, volume growth or revenue growth. Um, but really taking a look at, uh, at a granular level of, of their profit levels um, helps us understand if, if you know, we're, we're putting our money and our costs and, and setting the right, right price points across uh, the business. It's not just about growing the revenue, it's actually about increasing those margins and, and you know, becoming profitable. This dashboard is, is sort of an example of how we go about doing that. Uh, the data underneath the hood, um, you know, it has to be consolidated from the sales side, transactional sales data, blended with um, any cost of goods data. There's a lot that, that could go into that, but just think of that essentially as, as operational costs, freight, um, cost to actually purchase materials and make products or purchase the products themselves. Um, we have uh, price points that we set to sell, uh, sell the products. Typically, you know, if we increase the price, we have better margins, uh, but slightly less uh, volume as we traditionally know. We'll see the, the supply demand curves in a bit, the price curves in a bit. Um, and that all leads to, to essentially profits, like revenue minus cost is, is essentially our, our net profit. And, and we wanna grow that number. We wanna grow this, uh, this profit number. So what we have here is essentially um, some data for some beer products from Stella, Coors Light, Corona, Heineken, Bud, uh, Modelo, across uh, sales in, in different stores in, in Florida. And what we get essentially out of the, um, you know, the, the point of sale data, and this is very important, you have to have point of sale information, transactional data from the point of sale in the retail stores. You can't use like the distributor prices or the vendor prices for this has to be point of sales. You'll get these really nice price curves out by product line essentially. And these are really interesting. These are you know, what we wanna model. We wanna understand these. We wanna understand how these pricing curves relate essentially to a pricing histogram. Um, and the, the, or sorry, to a profit histogram. And the, the idea is that the, the higher you, you increase your price, right? The less sort of volume you're, you're gonna sell. This is like, just economics 101. Which is, what's interesting is, you know, the placement and the shape of this curve. It's always going to be sort of downward trending like this. The higher your price, the less, you know, volume you're gonna you're gonna sell. But the lower your price, sure, the more volume your your revenue you're gonna generate, um, or the or more volume your more cases you're gonna sell. But at some point, um, you're gonna end up eating too much into your margins. You still have to pay for a lot of things to get products onto the shelf. You have to pay for people's sal salaries and operational costs. You have to pay for freight. You have to pay for just cost of goods, like we said. Uh, maybe you're running promotions and all kinds of other things that could go into uh, and affect your margins. And at some point, if you lower your price too much, yeah, you, you still may sell a lot of volume, but at, at some point, um, essentially, it's going to kill your profit. And this is our profit histogram as a function of our various price points. And there's always a median value here, the right of which is going to be, you know, positive margins. And after that is going to be lower margins. So what's interesting is to understand where that turnover is for say each brand. So if I click on Heineken, for example, very small sort of profit margin there, they're kind of dipping down. There's the price curve for Heineken. Um, and this is this is for like a standard, uh, uh, I think it's a you know st a standard uh, six pack. Um, anything less than fourteen dollars essentially uh, per pack is is going to be eating into my into my profit uh, margins, and and I'm I'm actually not not going to be making money at that point. I'm almost giving the product away for free, um, not for free, but at least uh, from my point of view, because I'm not I'm not seeing a return. So we definitely want to sort of stay away from prices on this side of the curve. And this, this sort of price policing is very important. You can, you know, look at various stores, like some of them in, in various, in, in central Florida, for example, may, may actually be sustainable at a, at a price point that's lower than, you know, $14 a pack. But 
that's not necessarily this is like kind of very specific market market conditions why that may, that may be true um, let's take a look at, at Coors Light for example click on that it's a little bit more scattered uh, price point you can see our, our prices vary from like you know eleven dollars all the way up to almost thirteen dollars harder to, to sort of get a trend out of this the data is sort of all over the place and and you can see that some stores are deeply unprofitable while some stores are profitable it could be a lot uh, associated with that costs um, you know could be handled freight could be handled differently um, could be a lot of marketing dollars and spends that that affect this but if you kind of follow this you know trend it should be somewhere like you know anything less than sort of eleven dollars is, is not going to really cut it here um, and maybe as a last example, you know, take a look at a uh, very you know, Bud Light or very highly uh, selling uh, product here. Again, more scattered price curve, uh, but a little bit more of a clear trend in, in the profit histogram. Anything less than sort of uh, 1050 is, is not going to be uh, workable. So very important to, to sort of get this type of analysis out and to, to understand where to set your price points, not only so that you can sell, but so that you can essentially maintain a profit margin. That's how a lot of this reporting is used and acted upon to inform sales teams not to give up too much margin uh, just to push product out the door. Hope that was helpful. We'll catch you in the next one.